welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. A big hello to all the new subscribers. Um, and thank you for subscribing. Um, I've had a few comments of people saying that, uh, boy that sure was a good, good camera shot of the back of your head, or the back of your shoulder. Um, so I wanted to clarify a little bit of that. I am trying to be more um, aware of it. Um, and I have been trying to do more of editing it out. But what this channel is about, for the most part, um, is me working on people's engines, um, outboards, and so forth. And uh, sometimes, and, and I'm alone around here. I have no help, no, nobody that can run a camera, you know, for me or anything. I just got to do it on my own with tripods and sometimes I set it on the counter here and stuff like that. Um, but when I'm doing this stuff, especially at my tank, um, I have to get in there. I have to hear it, smell it, see it. Um, and the camera's just a byproduct. Um, so. I have been trying to, like I said, be more aware of it and edit it out, but I am not a camera person or a computer geek. Um, I do poorly at both of those. So, I just want to let you know I'm trying to do a little bit better job of it, but there's still going to be times when I'm focused on the engine. I'm not trying to get my fingers ripped off by a spinning flywheel, or I'm looking over an engine because I think I hear something you know, uh, leaking or some hissing or a popping or whatever. But anyway, I'll try and be more aware of it. But uh, yeah, so I am my own cameraman and my own fixer upper burger. So that's why you see a lot of that. Um, so we're going to get back on this 35 Evan Rude, which has been very rude. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drop that lower unit. I possibly. We'll see, may even pull the heads. Okay, what I did, I've got these locking pliers on the shaft there. And what I'm gonna do, or what I've already done, is I've been playing with the adjustments on this coupler right here. And so right now, let's see. There's forward, there's neutral, but it's still bumping, listen. So it's almost right where it needs to be. And then there's reverse, went on down, and reverse is good. But when I go back into neutral, there's neutral, I'm still in reverse. I have to come to forward and back, I'm still, well, it'll bump. So I can't get it to go up any further. There's reverse, I guess. But, yep. See, that should be forward right there. And it just ain't nothing happening. That should be neutral and it goes into reverse. Yep, it's reverse, all right. There's neutral. And one click up should be forward. It won't do. So there's something major wrong inside there. So I'm gonna go get another lower unit. I'll pull this one apart eventually and look see what's going on. But right now, I gotta go find a lower unit. I'll be back. Tell you, I am a little worried about my plums. You see how green they are? Today's like I think the ninth, tenth. But you, you, you can see the plums hanging right there, and uh, boy, they're just as green as can be. And it got down to 38 here the other day. 
So you can see how green they are. Um, there's a lot of them. Um, if you look around in, in beneath the leaves and everything, there's a lot of them, but boy, they are still green. So I'm hoping that uh, that they start ripening pretty quick. They're still quite green. Hey, here's the water pump. Impeller, it didn't actually look that bad, but let me get this for you. Ooh. That's the housing off the lower unit that I went back up with. You can see it's not bad. I probably could have used it again, but I had a, a whole kit. Um, yeah. I had a whole kit, so I went ahead and replaced the propeller housing and all. But here's the housing that came off the lower unit right there that wouldn't shift into forward. So this is the... Uh, I'm surprised it peed at all, but anyway, that's the housing. Look at all them busted. Busted, every busted, busted. Busted, busted. Salt's amazing. Busted. So, like I said, this housing you could still use again, I'm sure. But uh, the original impeller that came out of it. was this guy. So that's pretty bad memory set there, you can see. It, uh, but it, I mean, it was pumping. So anyway, so I went ahead and put a new impeller and housing whole impeller pump kit on there. And uh, if you look at this lower unit right here, this is the one that was originally on the motor that won't shift in a forward. You can see right here it's nice and smooth. There's no raised edge there that you could hang your nail on or anything. It's nice and smooth. And you can see the color of it. And here's the one we went back up with. Um, you can see it's got a, a ridge here. And you can see it's a different color than the rest of the body. So I got her all buttoned up. Um, I did the actual shift test, you know. Well, kind of like I started out. Okay, there's neutral. There's reverse. Neutral. Forward. So hopefully that'll take care of that issue. Let's get it in the tank and find out. Let me get you at least in the ballpark. I don't know the year this lower unit is off of. I just had it laying around. Lippy, squeezy. Make sure you're in there. Yeah, you are. Still much further that right way. So you can see the whole pet chaw. Let's see what happens.
Well, it shifts now. Seems to pee pretty good. So, that linkage on the carburetor can be adjusted a little better, I think. The sinking link needs to be worked on. Um, but, Well, she is an old salty motor. Um, the motor actually does have quite a bit of potential. Now that we got the lower unit off, the recoil fixed, the pan bolted down, um, carburetor cleaned, it needs a better sinking link, and there's that head issue. Or I'm not, I shouldn't say head issue, compression issue. Um, what I might recommend to the guy is instead of me opening it up, looking inside. I mean, it's got 95-ish on that bottom. Um, and 120 on the top. It may behoove him to just take it out and run the schnookers out of it for a good six gallon tank of gas and then redo those compression numbers. But at the same time, um, I wouldn't mind digging into it just to see what's there. So I'll have to think about that, whether I'm gonna go any further with it. Um, Right now, it runs, it shifts, it pees, and uh, it is tired and salty. But uh, right now, he's looking at the cost of the repair of a recoil. I won't charge him for a recoil starter. I'll just charge him for the parts it would take to repair his. Then I'll throw that one together and throw it in my pile. He's in for a water pump kit. Dem ain't free, don't you know? So I've got a water pump kit he's going to need to pay for. I've got a recoil he's going to need to pay for and a used lower unit he's going to need to pay for. And then you throw in there a couple hours labor and he's about at the maximus valueness opius of this outboard engine you want to stand. And you go, so he's going to be out 300 bucks or so. Maybe four. Right in there, in between three and four. What would it cost to go up and get 35 horsepower of brand new four stroke? Or what would it cost to even go find a very low hours good used 35 horsepower motor? 
something to think about. Because these things right here, as bad as this one is, they are Sherman tanks of the outboard world, in my humble opinion. They are, yeah, they just beat them to, to death. And this one, I'll let this plane go by. does have a, a, a lot of good things going for it. Um, I think with a head gasket change, and that wouldn't take me that long to do, um, half hour labor and the gasket. With the head gasket change, I think even if that compression lower cylinder maybe it was overheated at some point maybe it has you know a partially stuck ring or something um, maybe some carbon broke off in there and the uh, cylinder walls a little scored on the exhaust side or something even with that um, being that you're looking at about 95 and 120 that's a lot of life left still in this old tired motor. And what, what it has going good about it is the throttle linkage and everything is real nice and loose and free. It's not all corroded and stiff, which how that happened, I don't know. But, uh, and another thing it's got going for it is, um, and I'll show you, is the, the tilt mechanism and everything for such an old salty works like it's supposed to. tilt on it works. It tilts up and down easy um, like it's supposed to. The throttle linkage nice and free and everything like it's supposed to. So I have called the owner of this outboard twice and uh, both times I got a leave me a message deal. So I'm going to call him a third time here in just a little bit. And if I get his answering machine again, I'm going to go out in my parts and get a head gasket and I'm going to pull that head. So, let me make a phone call and I'll be back. All right, Tay. I decided the head had to come off. So I popped that head like a teenage pimple. The head gasket. I found no obvious failure in that head gasket anywhere. It actually looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't see anything in this head gasket that, I mean, it's, it's a little, you know, salty here and there, but I don't see anything that would say it was a compromised gasket. I don't see anything that would say it was a part of the problem that I can see. Hopefully I'm getting that where you guys can see it good enough but the head gasket looks fine overall but I'm going to show you what it did it did fine and in and of it is the problem in my humble opinion see that scoring On the exhaust side, there's also some staining like there. 
but right in there thought I had that out of my way for good right there I can actually hang a nail on that see that couple different places but right there I can catch a nail on that and then you can see what looks to be like a burnt area here um, and then a little more scoring over here right at the very bottom but up on the intake side and everything all the way around it looks pretty good but uh, right there you can see a pretty deep score right there some, I can hang a nail there. Can't hang a nail on that bottom one. But right there on that one, boom. See it? Grab my nail. Boom. So she does have some scoring. Could have been overheated. Some carbon got broke off. I found no metal pieces or anything to suggest it was a ring or anything like that. Now if we look at the top cylinder, let me wipe it down a little bit. Okay, it looks pretty daggum good all the way around. So nice and smooth, no scoring at all. So what does this all mean? What does it mean? What it means is I'm going to but there's no doubt that the issue with that bottom cylinder having only 90 PSI is that area right there. The exhaust side of that cylinder has issues. Show! So what's the plan, Stan? That's the plan. I'm going to take this flex home. Some people call them a dingle ball. Dingleberry. Ball home. I'm going to take this and hit that lower cylinder. Then I'm going to take this 600 grit emery cloth. That's my plan. Now, my other thing, and, and I don't know if this is going to even work, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit it with that flex home. And then I'm going to hit it with the 600 grit. I am not going to do anything to the top cylinder. The top cylinder, I was getting 124. That's good enough for an old engine like this. Um, so my, my plan is to try and hone this bottom cylinder, just like we are right here, with just the, the cylinder in the bottom, down at bottom dead center. I'll hit it with that flex hone and I can't even get perfectly straight in there but coming in at an angle will actually hone the area that has the little bit of scoring so I'm gonna hit it with the flex hone um, not real hard and super um, I'm just gonna hit it a little bit then I'm gonna take this the 600 grit hit it some more clean it all out and everything put the head back on I did find another gasket it's not a new gasket, but it looks better than the original. The original looked overall fine, but this one was just a little cleaner, and it was in my 
used gasket pile. So I'm going to take this head gasket and go back up with it. Um, and like I said, I'm going to leave the top cylinder alone. If I can get the object or the hope that I can, uh, that I'm looking to get, the result is to bring this 90 psi cylinder closer in range, in the differential range between the two cylinders. So we'll just leave the top one alone. I'm going to hone the bottom one and then uh, put the head back on and see if those numbers, 90 to 124, 125, come closer together. I don't know. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know if it'll work. If I remember right, I tried this years ago on like a 25, and I can't remember what the results were. So, let's give it a go. Let's give her to go. Might be a total waste of time. We don't know. But, that's what I'm going to do. So, let me get this in there. And I'm kind of putting the weight of the, the flex home toward the damaged area. All I'm doing is pushing on my drill a little bit like that toward down and toward the uh, the area of the cylinder where the the damage is and boy it's already looking a little better and i ain't gonna sit here and you know wail on the thing Say that's good enough. Maybe a little more right in that one area. I can still get a nail. Huh? There's about three or four good ones, boy, but there's just one particular score mark there. And it don't even look like I need to go very far into the cylinder. It, it, it don't go. looking a little better I don't know if you can see it yeah that looks a little better you can see the different score lines and it lightened them right up and so now I'm gonna hit it with the emery cloth oh let me get a light let me... there that looks quite a bit better actually <laughs> it faded those score things out pretty good so now I'm going to hit it with the emery cloth. Um, just take me some emery cloth like this. Oh. Get it rolled up to about that size. You know what, I might even tape that. I got a customer pulling up. But you get the idea. Okay, so I honed her up and then mirrored clothed her, and it actually looks a lot better. You can still see a little line there, but I can't catch a nail on it anymore. So I'm going to oil her up real good. Hopefully, you can see that. There's still a little score, but she came out a lot better than it was looking. Whether it makes any difference, I don't know. But, um, that's what I'm going to do, or that's what I gonna already did. And now I'm going to 
lube everything back, clean everything real good, lube it up, and go from there. Got my Milwaukee one half, I clean things up, put some two cycle oil in there. I'm just doing that to kind of re help everything get good and lubed. Okay, I got her all put back together. I'm in the bottom cylinder here. You can see I'm zeroed out. Hopefully you can see that. I'm zeroed out. Bottom cylinder. Let's see what we get. If it did any good or was it a waste of time? Ninety. It didn't change at all. Ninety. So, didn't appear to help at all. I'm in the top cylinder. I am zeroed out. Let's see if we do any better on the top. Now, I didn't do anything to the top. I was just trying to raise that bottom. So there's our top stuff. Let's see what we get. I got a hundred and five hundred and ten. Yep, I got a hundred and ten. So ninety and a hundred and ten. All right, we got her in the tank, squeezy bulb squeezied. Do what we got. It took me three, four pulls to get her to pop. Um, I would say that's normal after pulling the head off, honing it like I did and everything. I believe that bottom cylinder is going to come up. I think the 
equilibrium between the two will get better once this thing's taken out and has the schnookers run out of it. Oh! Well, it'll shift going out of gear now. He's really good. Um, after the little quick hone and uh, sand, uh, emery cloth, I think the motor overall was that far from being a parts motor. Um, but I just hate to do that because, like I said, it has a lot of other qualities on it that says it can go for a few more years. Um, every, even as dirty and salty as it is, everything wasn't stiff and frozen. The mag and all is nice and free. And the, tiller and the tilt and the clamps and and I think with what I did to it and and <laughs> it was marginal whether I should have even but I think that number um, what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna run it for a good half an hour in the tank pull it back out and and do the numbers again it won't be this video cuz uh, it's getting a little late out here And the old, oh, oh, back. And the old, oh, oh. The electric start is getting a little, oh, getting a little heated up. So, uh, but I did notice, I did uh, adjust the air screw mixture a little bit on it. And I did notice that it uh, it seemed to be like idling better. And of course, we put a different lower unit on it. We put a different water pump in it. Recoil, clean the carb, hone the cylinders, switched out head gaskets with a better looking one. And uh, I think I can dial this puppy in a little better. And I do believe with the, the last compression readings I got, here's the old head gasket, which ain't nothing wrong with it. But I believe that a good running, and I believe those numbers will come up. Now, I do believe, I don't, I don't have to believe, I know. Um, it took a hit somewhere along its life. Um, before I did that little hone on it like that, I could catch my little nails from my big old fat feeners. I could catch my nails. And, uh, but when I went back up with it, after I honed it and everything, I could not catch a nail. I could still see a little bit of the marks there, but I couldn't catch a fingernail on it. So I think with just a good running, um, it took a hit, no doubt, um, but I think this as a good, as a work motor would be good enough. I, th I think it'll, I think it'll bounce back a little bit even.
another hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Out Boys with Cody Bass.